you all know the topic today this evening talk it is very interesting and most of people so concerned about our thoughts feelings and emotions are we we all are concerned about them right mm -hmm. so then i can see uh, my spiritual journey including myself all of us are trying to handle uh, when i say handle i don't know how but however we are handling them the way we know way we understand at that moment so some some situation so then people handle um with their own ways um using outside sources and information then they get tired and get upset and get um, uh ruin their lifestyle and then they are thinking hmm better to go and find a spiritual place if i become a spiritual being then i can handle them better so just going to a spiritual place doesn't make any sense when you go to those spiritual places you have to go inward i call introspection we have to go inside and search and dig into the roots so then to do that people what they do what we did today meditate, meditate. so then we people meditate then people are believing when we meditate we will be better with them i know some people i'm very sorry to say this <laughs> I know some people practicing meditation one man said even before you born into this world I'm practicing meditation but he is the one of the most difficult annoying person I ever met <laughs> emotionally um his uh, behaviors and very challenging and not you know I'm okay you know being a buddhist monk I know how to manage those things but some situation i realize oh my god it is so draining so difficult then i am thinking people always around that person how difficult it is so but he claim himself i am practicing one day he came to me and said he was so proud about his meditation he said even before you born into this world i started my meditation who are you <laughs> something like that right <laughs> now but i don't see any connection his meditation and his lifestyle so i experience lot and same time i experience so many people practicing meditation they learn how to handle these difficult uh, emotions and thoughts and feelings whatever we have we are experience in our life one day uh, we have wednesday uh, meditation at the temple Uh, so one day one young man uh, who was practicing with me for a while and he came to me and said uh, bhante uh, i am leaving now then i i was asking him how was meditation today then he said terrible difficult i just what i what are you talking about difficult so i have lots of thoughts i have lots of emotion i don't know i'm all over i was a mess I feel but I am very sorry to say this this meditation doesn't work. <laughs> I'm so disappointed about this whole meditation thing. And so then he said I don't know what to do with that. I'm meditating and you know the put all the energy and strength to do every day uh, but I came to the temple today today it didn't work. Why lots of thoughts feelings and emotions. So then I said okay I understand how you feel. Let me ask this what are you doing for living then he said i am a bank manager working at a bank just imagine yourself now tomorrow morning thursday you go to work now you are at the office now you don't have any thoughts no feelings no emotions you are like frozen like a buddha statue <laughs> right you know just you know no in nothing happening then i asked him do you like that 
Then he said, no, I need my thoughts. I need my feelings. I need my emotions. I need everything. Then I, sa I said, stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is nothing wrong with those things. So this package, <laughs> when we come to this world, we came with all those things. That's a part of this whole human existence. We, it's a part of it. So people meditate to stop all thinking, all emotions, all feeling. I want to completely stop. If you completely stop them, what we call? Dead. Dead. <laughs> right? so, so a person who is practicing meditation, he is or she is not the dead person. So we have to understand, you know, the Buddha is not a dead person. <coughs> he called himself, I'm an awakened one. He's fully awake with ho all these emotions and feelings and thoughts, whatever happening in our uh, lives. So now I'm asking another question, or I can explain to you. When we have good thoughts, good feeling, good emotions, you call good, whatever you call good, what do you do with them? Huh? Hang, on. Hang on and enjoy. enjoy it. What else? Fantasizing it, right? You go to a dream, you know, talking to yourself and you know, really enjoying it. So there's a thoughts, emotion, feelings coming. You really don't like them. What we are doing there? Try to push them away. When you try to push them away, what will happen? Push back. <laughs> Keep coming. Yeah. Then what will happen? That's how we had to understand this. You had to ask a question. Then what will happen? Push them away again. Huh? Try to push them away again. Right. Mentally? Frustrated. Yeah, frustrated get tired, no energy, get angry, you don't want to look at people, you don't want to smile, complaining to other people, then you are pointing fingers for other people because of you, <laughs> I feel this way. Now you can see. Now here in this country, there's a big word, very expensive word, management. That word is very expensive. People pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go into people and learn how to manage. If you go into those people, please do. I'm not asking to stop. I think the way I understand my practice, it is a simple act, simple realization. After you understand this, no need to pay any money thousands of hundreds of dollars to understand this. It's a very simple act. Being wonderful human beings, we can understand this. To understand this, only thing we need, we have proper guidance. We all have to have noble friendships. We have to have noble people around us to guide us then those people will help you to understand them. So, nature of our lives, always we are going to extremes. That's the nature of human uh, lives, go to the extremes. One extreme is suppress. Do we do that here? What do you suppress? You suppress things. I can see. What, what are the things you are suppressing? Pain, Pain you suppress. Anger. Anger, we are suppressing. So sometimes we say, oh, I was so angry, I control myself. I control myself. That's what people say, right? I control myself, which is not good. What else? Fear, Fear we suppress. So when you are suppressing, what are the other alternatives you do? What are the other paths you are going to suppress? Drugs, alcohol, all other the, you know, addicts. You know, we get into the addictions. So now you suppress. 
So Buddha said, there's a one extreme we call suppress, don't do that. If you go to a suppression condition, you cannot understand those things. If you suppress, what is the nature of suppress? It will back up. Then it is coming like a physical pain, mental pain, they cannot handle it. Then sometimes they become uh, mentally disabled, physical disabled. Why? Lots of things we suppress. Then anymore, we cannot handle it in our mind, in our body. So Buddha said, don't suppress. There is a other extreme, Buddha said, don't go to that, is express. <laughs> now Buddha said, don't suppress, don't express. Now how do you feel about that? What is express? How do you feel when you express? Okay, okay, understand. Now, just tell me a little bit more about it. Sometimes I feel judgmental. Judgmental, okay. Yeah, anything? You said... Bring it out. Okay, bring it out. Okay. Yeah, so in that moment when you suppress, express, you feel better. In that moment, you feel better. There's some kind of benefits. In that moment, you feel better. How about later? <laughs> later you feel lots of guilt and you feel I did something wrong, I lost my friendship, I hurt somebody's feeling, then you have lots of difficulties after that. So then according to the Buddhist teaching, don't suppress, don't express. Now please think what you are going to do now then. <laughs> It's very interesting, right? What we are going to do something, you know, now. Accept. Accept, yes, very good. Accept, what else? Huh? Observe. Observe, wonderful. See, I don't want to give a talk. <laughs> okay, what else? <laughs> what else? See you with process. Huh? Process. Okay, process. Be with them. Okay, be with them. Okay. So it's very interesting, see? Now you all know the answers. But we don't, do, we don't do it. That is the problem. We all know the answers, but we don't do it. So Buddha said, don't express, don't suppress. So the words I'm using, analyze. I know I talked to a couple of people about this word. When you hear the word analyzing, how do you feel in English language? Analyzing, you know, you, uh, your workplace, you are analyzing things. Trying to understand. Trying to, uh, trying to understand, okay, anything? Study. Study, okay, very good. That means it makes sense then, right? So then you have to analyze. When you are sometimes people analyzing things, as you said, is so judgmental. When the way people are analyzing. So, you know, the according to the Buddhist practice, when we are analyzing, I call it maybe mindfulness practice. It's a meditation practice. Introspection, going inward. A little bit more information. So even we are analyzing, some people are analyzing things, then they don't want to see, you know, sometimes they see something dark and difficult and challenging. It is overwhelming. When you analyzing, when they see them, some people don't want to see them. What they do then? Denial. Huh? Denial. Denial them. H try to hide them. Even you see it, try to hide them. Why you get scared? So that's not good. It, then again, it become repression. So when we are analyzing, be careful. You know, you have to face to this reality. When we are analyzing, you will see it is so challenging, it is so fearful. That is the first result when you analyze. Does it make sense now? So I realize in my own practice, when I try to dig into the roots, I see that challenges and difficulties which I don't want to handle. I need something sweet. 
I need something fun. I need something entertaining. I think something I can dream. But all those challenging difficulties, thought, and when we are analyzing them, it is not easy. So that's why people keep postponing things. So my, my own first experience when I try to analyze this is the problem, it is so negative, I don't want to face to it, then I try to push it again, hide it, and you know, put it you know, put into the closet. But that's not good practice. So when you're analyzing, if you see something difficult and challenging, face to it. That is the beauty of that practice. Face to it. So one night, now I'm telling my own experiences. You know, it recently happened. Now think about now almost 40 years being a monk. Now think about you are not late. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I, you know, last week, I think, last week I was in Hawaii teaching. Uh, actually, three weeks I was traveling in Phoenix and then I went to Hawaii. And so then I, you know, I was in Maui. And then after week being there, I returned to Chicago. Now, you know, five, six hours time different. I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep. Then one day, first night, I went to bed around one o'clock. Still, I'm widely awake. I don't want to sleep. Then uh, I'm totally fine with that. Then I close my eyes, you know, thinking I'm going to sleep. I try to pretend I'm going to sleep, right? I close my eyes. Then my mind says, don't close your eyes. <laughs> now think about how stupid this mind is, right? And then the, don't close your eyes. So then again, I close my eyes. I am good thing about this, I'm aware about it. Otherwise, I cannot tell this story. Anyway, I try to close his eyes. Then I had another thought, I am bored. <laughs> now think about this human condition. I am bored. Then I had another thought, if I have one of my good best friends with me right now, how wonderful it is. Now think about how our thoughts are working. So like 30, 40 minutes, I saw all those dramas in my head. But I didn't fail. I saw them. I observed them. I saw the roots. What is the roots? I realized one thing is time change, and I totally understand those things will happen to all the people. Then I realized the root is that night being with those people in those beautiful, like a heaven in, on the earth, like in Maui, came back to this cold weather again. <laughs> I felt like tired, number one. Number two, I felt lonely, which is totally fine. That's a part of this journey. That's why I had the thought in my head, if I have a friend or somebody in my life today, right now, my life is better. When we have those thoughts, those thoughts always come into you? How many times you get those thoughts? All the time, right? When you have those thoughts, then you are thinking, I have to call somebody. Then keep calling hours and hours, just gossiping. Do you know about that friend and you know, always gossip? So then I thought I can call too. You know, that time Sri Lanka, in the daytime, I can call my sister. Then of course I can hear some gossip <laughs> and the family matters, I can hear, right? Then I thought I am going to call my sister. Then I can talk about the family matters. Now what we are doing, making those decisions, what we are doing, go against to the reality. Then get into more troubles. <laughs> Even one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, I am wide awake. I can see all my disturbing, difficult thoughts, feelings and emotions. Everything is there within 30 minutes. Right after I close my eyes. But the good thing about I am so grateful for the Buddha. I am so grateful for the teaching. I'm so grateful for this practice and the noble friendship. 
I have some tools. I think that is meditation. So meditation is I have some tools. The problem is we don't know how to use these tools. My third book is coming uh, end of October. The title of the book is called the Sitting on the Toolbox. <laughs> I'm always using that saying, sitting on the toolbox. What do you understand sitting on the toolbox? What is the purpose of the toolbox? Fix something. Fix something. If you are using it for as a chair, <laughs> That means we don't know the purpose of the toolbox. So what we had to do now? We had to open the toolbox and fix our problems. Fix our problems. So I can see the people who come here to Theosophical Society and many, many years. Now today I was thinking, oh my God, almost I'm aging so fast. Now I'm coming to this place almost 10 years. Long time. So now, how many years you are coming to this place? I'm asking you, how about one year? Raise your hand, one year, okay. Two years, six months? No, all are new? <laughs> all, right, okay. So, you know, so it, that means more years, right? More than a year you are practicing. That means, of course, I think your toolbox is full. Is it? Your toolbox is full. When I ask a question, always you are giving me a good answers. The problem is now, you become a, like a little boy or little girl collecting toys. <laughs> now I'm asking you, stop collecting toys. When you are collecting toys, what you have to do then? then parents has to buy another place to keep them. <laughs> you know, the whole basement is full of toys. Then all over the house is toys. You are kicking to those toys. You are throwing those to toys all over. Now I think, coming to Theosophical Society, more than one year, if you are coming more than one year, that means I know you have enough tools. Now this is enough. I am asking you now, use them as much as you can. Otherwise, next 30 years, you are coming to this Theosophical Society, doesn't make any big change in your life. You come here and sit here, listen to me, go home and do the same thing. You are just having a little fun. <laughs> I call the Dharma fun. <laughs> Right? Dharma fun. You know, then evening you come to the Theosophical Society, have a little fun, and go and have the same behaviors, same emotional challenges, same difficulties, and same problems. Nothing happened in your life. Now please ask that question. You talk about mindfulness. You talk about being, accepting them. Exactly, you know exactly what it is. Now, <clears throat> I want to ask you, what we have to do when we have these thoughts, feelings, and emotions? All are interconnected. Now there is a thought in your head. You know, something thought come to your mind. Now think about that thought. You are planning for your future. Okay? You are planning for your future. Then what you are doing with that thought? Now tell me the story. Now you have having a thought in your head. You are think you know re related to your future. <laughs> then what you are doing after that? Hmm? Planning, planning. How you are planning? Now think about just one thought. How you know? No need to talk lots of things. Let's talk about one thought. You know now that there is a thought in your head, thinking about your future. Then. Then what? Okay. Then not. Uh, huh? Act. act. How you act? I will tell you my experience. Okay. 
Last year, I turned into 50. Now I'm all monk, <laughs> right? And so, you know, when I was 49, now people are in my 49 in the temple kind of starting to uh, make the plans for my 50th birthday celebration whole week. Actually, you're also coming for the talk. And so, one day after meditation, one of my old students came to me and said, Oh my God, I cannot believe you, you know, you just turned into 30, came to this, you know, the Illinois, and so maybe you remember a lot, and so now you are an old monk? <laughs> yeah, I know they are very close with me, you know, I know they are not insulting me or anything, which is okay, I'm, yes, I'm old monk. I, I can understand that. Then he asked, yes, I said, yes, I'm an old monk, right? Can you believe it? Then we start to laugh. Then right away, this man asked a question. Bhante, what you are going to do when you get really old? Now, as he said, you know, I'm traveling almost 200 days per year, all over the world, traveling, traveling, traveling. It's a good question to ask. When you are getting really old, what are you going to do? I asked a counter question, what do you mean? Then he asked me again, you are going to live here in this country? Or you know, you are going back to Sri Lanka? I said, I'm sorry, I don't have any plan. That's, you know, that's, you know, now whole, you know, the talk is ended. Now I went home. Now at night, I go to bed. See, now I'm talking of one thought. Somebody asks a question about what you are going to do when you get really old, you go back to Sri Lanka, or you are going to stay here. How our thoughts are working. Now I'm just by myself. Oh, that's a great question he asked. <laughs> hmm, interesting. That's true, I'm 50 years old. Then I was questioning myself. The question he asked is great, Actually, where I'm going to live when I'm getting really old here in this country or go back to Sri Lanka? Then first thought, still my, my blood, my feelings, still there, right? My memories, first 20 years. I thought, yes, I go back home. That's wonderful. Home is always sweet home, right? So I, I thought, I'm going back home. Now think about, I'm 80 years old, go back to Sri Lanka. Then I'm making my own story. See, now I'm making a story. Now it's a very distractive and difficult thoughts. I'm going back to Sri Lanka. I'm an eight years old monk. So then that means when I go back, I don't have any relations. Mm -hmm. That means my age people all gone. Then the people, there's no connection because all my life I was in the United States. I don't have any connection to anybody in that country. That means I was making my story, ah, doesn't work. <laughs> Doesn't work. I cannot live there. Then I thought, no, the best thing, most of my adult life, I was here, so I'm going to stay here. Then I have fun and good life. <laughs> then I thought, hmm, then what will happen? Then I'm really old. Then people who learn from me, they all are gone. No, still there, no, no connection. All the new generation are here. They don't have any teaching experience or nothing. I'm just making my story. Then I realize maybe one day I end up in a facility or somewhere. I mean, think about it, I'm in a nursing home. Then I'm an old monk being in a nursing home. Now, you know, at midnight I'm just thinking, oh my God, who is going to push my wheelchair? <laughs> you get those kind of thoughts? Who is going to push my wheelchair? So then I was thinking, oh my God, who is going to change my diapers? Those are, those are reality of life. Those experiences, sometimes we get into those experiences. You can see your parents, your grandparents, all other people getting old, they are facing to those realities. Now think about that kind of thoughts. Even happen in a monk head, practicing 40 years. <laughs> Is the thoughts are happening, even mi midnight. So then, whole night I couldn't sleep. Why? I was so worrying about my 
future based on one thought one question somebody asked about what will happen about your future how I feed that thought how I fed it then end of the night early morning like Buddha <laughs> that's how he realized too I realize what's wrong with me <laughs> it took hours what's wrong with me it's okay I realize yes I can think about my future which is wonderful I can make the plans for my future which is wonderful so then I realize it is okay to think about my future I can make 10 plans for my future one plan is I'm moving to Sri Lanka of course one plan is I'm going to stay here if I stay here I don't like Illinois why is too cold for me <laughs> then I was thinking I go to Florida I can make the plan now I am planning I'm moving to Maui in Hawaii it's beautiful right I have now kind of five six plan for my future which is wonderful but I realize I can plan many things for my future but one may happen one plan may happen when I need it then understanding the nature of my plans why all the plans never happen whatever happened in what I plan I will go with that plan <coughs> then I enjoy my life. Make sense now? Mm -hmm. So even you are hours and hours and sitting and meditating, you don't get that realization. I know some people doing like hours and hours. So what I am suggesting, when we have those difficult, painful thoughts, feeling emotions, what you have to do? Let them to process. With what? Not with your emotions. How we have to process them? With what? Openness. With awareness. We have to be aware about them. So good thing about it, sooner or later I realize I'm making my own story. In the Buddhist teaching, we, you know, there's a Pali word we call papancha. Or, or there's another word we call the sankhara in the Pali, which means <coughs> simple word making a story because of these thoughts, feelings and emotions how many stories we are making <clears throat> we are the best human being in the world making the wonderful stories wonderful stories so that means whatever happening in your body whatever happening in your mind be present to them be aware to them. I heard the story, one of uh, the fa famous meditation center in Sri Lanka. <coughs> so one of the teachers shared with me this story. There was a girl who came from England to meditate. Most of the people, foreign people come to this place. At night, he was there too. And Nanilabha, you know, he was, you know, he, you know, she was meditating at night around 8 o'clock. He's the top of the mountain, no electricity, nothing dark, only candlelight even rooms. One evening when everybody is meditating in the meditation hall, she felt mosquito bite. Now think about it. Mosquito bite. Then she was thinking, oh my God, before I leave London, my mother said, get the vaccination for malaria. I said, no, I'm young, I'm okay. I neglected that. Now this is a mosquito bite, this is a malaria one. What she's doing now? Making the story, feeding her thoughts and feeling whatever happening in her body and mind, she's feeding them. Now I have malaria. <laughs> now I am sick. Now I have fever. Now people take me to the hospital. You remember taking to the hospital is a whole big deal. You know, go to the, you know, all the way bottom of the mountain and take him to the hospital is a whole other big deal. Now people take me to the hospital. Now I am laying on the hospital bed. There is no like, uh, you know, the caring like, you know, the England. It's a poor country. Now I don't have my parents. Now I am sick. Now I am headache. I, now I am vomiting. People, you know, the doctors cannot find the good medicine for me. I am going to die in Sri Lanka. Where she is now? 
where is she sitting now? No. Where is she sitting on meditation cushion? Now she is at the meditation center. She is meditating. In that moment, she had that, you know, the mosquito bite. Sitting on the meditation cushion, she made this whole story about death. You know, now think about how unfortunate, even we are sitting on the meditation cushion, we are making all the negative difficulties and challenges into our life. Why? She called herself, she is meditating, what she was doing? Become slave to her thoughts, feelings and emotions. That's what happened. When you are truly meditating or practicing, practicing awareness, practicing mindfulness, you are fully aware what exactly happening right now in my mind and my body. Now think about my difficult time at night being old and coming from you know, <laughs> Mavi and I lost for a while. I lost for a while, like a minute or two. Very short period of time. But the good thing about the practice, I figure it out. Otherwise, I never tell this story to you. <laughs> so I'm very honest about myself. Don't look at me as a Buddha. I'm not. Sometimes people put me to pedestal, which is okay, you know, that's how people feel about it. But I am exactly like another human being like you and all of you. I have exactly what you have, all the thoughts and feelings and emotions. But being in this life journey, spiritual journey, maybe quickly I will address them. That's why I'm always sharing with them. Only way to handle these things, be aware about them, don't feed them. Don't feed them. So you said something very interesting today. You had something difficult, you know, the emotion or thought or something. You get up from the bed and sit down and start to meditate. You, you said something, you know? I, I would do, I, sometimes I'd get up if I was sleeping and I had thought came up and I realized that I was getting sucked into it. Uh -huh. I'd get up and I'd, I'd either take a yoga pose or a tai chi pose or something uh -huh, uh -huh. so that I, I could get... That's a really good, good practice. You know, there's a sutra, I, I don't want to explain all those things. That's a good practice. Change the, what you are thinking. But that way of thinking also not permanent. In the beginning, which is okay, the best thing is get up from the bed, sit or bring that awareness in front of your face. That's what we call. So the, the, another analogy in the Buddhist teaching Mindfulness is like a holding a mirror in front of your face. This makes sense now? What is the purpose of the mirror? To look at your face. So quickly we can hold that mindfulness mirror in front of your challenges and difficulties. Because why? All our five or six senses around here, somewhere. That's why we have to keep like this. Then you can see it. I'm always trying. So yesterday, one of my brother monks called me because we have long years of relationship with them. And so they remember when I was young because they were kid monks, you know, like, a, you know, teenage monks. Oh my God, you changed a lot. Then I asked, you know, when you say you change a lot means I'm get old or what? <laughs> then he's, I know what he was talking, but I was making fun with him. And so he said, you change a lot means your practice change a lot. The, your behaviors, your action, the way you talk, the way things you are accepting, especially your compassion and loving kindness is change. Then I said, thank you so much for the reminder. I am not ego about it. I don't have ego about it. I'm so humble. I try to keep it exact like that. I know I change because I was one of the most annoying monk in the world <laughs> that time. I know that, I am accepting that. I never give a chance to anybody and very difficult and challenging person as if you want to go and ask them, that's how I used to be, even being a monk. Like my 19, 20, 18, that age. But good thing about my life now, during this process, every single day, 
little by little, I deeply realize what are the, my emotions, challenges, difficulties I have. Recently, my, uh, my nephew called me from Sri Lanka, middle of the night, and said, and they call me Little Monk, you know, when I was, you know, that's my nickname in the family, because called the Little Monk, because when I became a monk, I was very little, right? So still they call me the Little Monk. Hey, you know what? And so grandfather had the heart problem, he's hospitalized. I said, okay, thank you so much for sharing the news. Then I'm almost ready for the class. I just hang up the phone. So then I, you know, then I was waiting and welcoming people. Then I can see he's keep calling again. Within a few minutes again, he's calling. Then I answer the phone again. I ask, what's going on? Then he said, did you understand what I said? I said, what? Grandfather is on the hospital. He got the heart problem. I said, yes, I realize. I understand what you said. I thought you didn't get it. I, I asked, what do you mean? You become, you are not, you, you didn't show any emotions. That's what he said. In this conditioned world, what they are expecting? Freaking out. <laughs> That's the word. They want, oh my God, I'm crying, I'm sad, what's wrong? I'm coming to Sri Lanka right now. Only question I ask, if he's in hospital, I'm happy. That means I cannot do that job. He's in the hospital. But if I go back, I had to go to give him emotional support. So he was thinking I had to freak out. I had to get upset. Oh my God, you know, the, I'm so sad what I'm going to do. I'm sorry. And, you know, something he want to hear. So that's the nature of the human conditions. I feel I don't have it anymore. I, it doesn't mean I'm a perfect human being. I'm aware about it. I'm aware about it. Does it make sense now? Mm -hmm. So, when you understand about your thoughts and feelings, you appreciate them, or oh, they are present right now. This is the way it is. This is the part of life. Things are happening. Things are happening to me. Things are happening to other people. Things are happening to the parents. Things are happening to the world. Like, uh, two, three days ago, um, one man came to me uh, and, you know, personal meeting and he scheduled it when I was out of the, you know, the state. And so right after he came to me and said, I need a piece of paper and pen. I gave a piece of paper and pen. He started to write. Bhante, what are the four things people need to survive? What are the four things we need to survive? Right, exactly. We call the four requisites, requisites right? So they hear right. Then he said, I hate this world. I asked, why? The jobs we are doing so unhealthy. I'm so emotional. I'm so mad with President Trump. I'm so mad with President Trump. Then somebody asked me even, is there, is there is a Buddhist way to kill him? <laughs> Can you believe after meditation somebody asked me, is there a Buddhist way to kill president? Oh. You know, I know he made the joke, but now, he, you know, this, you know, the person said, I'm mad. This whole country is, you know, something wrong. And so then he's complaining about the whole world, everybody. You know, people are doing unhealthy job. Why people are doing these, these, these things? So I said, oh, I hear this whole my life in different levels. I mean, it's not a surprise for me. Is it a surprise? All the difficulties and challenges in life? It's not. It's a part of it. Because I didn't react to it. I just listened to it. I said, yes, I get it. So now somebody bring ideas to discuss. They have to bring some solutions to some situation. Some concern, you know, some distance they have to bring some solutions. So then I can, I ask him, what is your solution for these things? Then he said, that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm here. I said, it, it means you are the solution. I'm giving you this job. Go and change it. You can do it. I said, I don't want to take that job. And not only you, all the spiritual leaders, all the priests, all the monks around the world, 
they have to take the steps and go and change the world. I said, I don't want to do that. I am, I am never going to do it. Then he said, Bhante, that's not nice. You can do it. Then I asked him, why you don't do it? <laughs> why you don't do it? So people don't listen to me. <laughs> people all do, uh, don't listen to me. Then he said, we have so many things in this country. People are consuming so many things. I don't know something wrong, something wrong with all of the, you know, the people in this country. Then he said, you know, when I go to my apartment, I have so many things. When my son comes to see me, what do we do both together? Playing the video games. Sometimes he gets mad with me. Then I said, see, now I can see the problem. Problem is not the world. Problem is the you. <laughs> I said, you are the problem. You don't see it. Now you are asking me, solve the problem for yourself. You know? I said, I cannot solve your problem because I can see because you are the problem. So the best thing is go and teach your son or educate yourself, learn yourself. Then he said, hmm, I don't know. I don't want to do that. See, that's the problem with the people. People don't want to do their difficulties and challenges, what they are facing every single day, but they are so worrying about the world. Then when I say, you are the problem, that means you are participating for this problem. So I am asking you, when you have a thoughts, feelings, difficult, you know, the emotions, don't give more energy into them. What you have to do when you see them, separate yourself from that fire. So then I use an analogy. Now think what we are sitting in this place. There's a mountain in front of us. The big boulder is rolling down. You are asking me, Bhante, go and stop that boulder. Otherwise, so many people will kill. Do you think I will do that? I said, no. I said, I'm not going to do that. If I see boulder is coming down, I grab my bag and my tea, I run. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I know that big boulder is too big for me. The best thing I can do what? Taking care of myself. And then later, maybe I will come back. Is there any survivors? I can do something for those people. That's how I see it. If I can do something, I will do it. If it is too big for me to handle, I handle myself. Now I am asking you, you know, most of those emotional challenges, you know, thoughts and, you know, all the dramas you have, because of your reaction to the outer world, what you created. That means other people, the president or other, you know, the world is not responsible for that. So if you really want to change those things, what you have to do now? Change yourself. If you change yourself, it is slow progress. It takes time, but that experience is the most powerful experience, powerful gift you can live in this world. Does this make sense? So one day I was giving that teaching to, uh, in, when I was in Phoenix. I said, world is too big for you to focus, but your inner world is perfect size. Next time when I go to Phoenix, that my host family, that lady came to me and showed me, Bante, look what I have. Then I can see little three stars, like a tattoos, three little stars, tattoo. No, just one little one here, okay? Then there are so many here <laughs> in this area. I asked, what, do, what, do you, what does that mean? Then she said, this one. I, you know, I cannot see all of them right now. But this one, Bhante, I can see it. Do you remember one talk you gave me that uh, teaching? So I made that tattoo every single day. As a woman, I do put my jewelries. I see this one. Then I'm always saying, this one is this one. How beautiful that? How, how powerful that realization? 
Now I am asking, this is not the difficult job to do. I am asking you, make it very simple. No need to go and read whole the library in the, you know, the, in the Olcott library to understand this. No need to go to the 10-day Vipassana retreat to understand this. If you go, please do. I am not against those things. No need to um, sit hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours sitting on the cushion to understand it. If you do it right, middle of the grocery store, if you understand exactly what exactly happening here, you are successful. So all the stories in the Buddhist tradition, most of the stories, all the monks and enlightened nuns who they realize things, not sitting on the meditation cushion, while they are doing their life. <coughs> I saw this, I realized this. Does this make sense? But sitting on the meditation cushion, whatever you do, it is effect into that realization. Does this make sense? Therefore, don't put your practice to time. Don't put your practice to condition time. I call the condition time. Who made the time? We did it. The time is condition. So, real practice, no boundaries. Real practice, no time. It is beyond the time. Don't put into the time frame. So, sitting somewhere, you know, the sitting in front of thousands of people. If you see a difficult co-worker at the place, you know, the place you work, you have a difficult, annoying boss at workplace, you have a difficult child or difficult husband or wife, sitting in front of those people, if you have your Dharma practice, you can realize it right away. Without hurting to those people, without harming to those people, you can understand it if you have that powerful awareness. That's the tool. Any questions? So, how do you remember to remember? <laughs> that means it's a really good question and a sweet one. Um, that means we are so confused here and we are always going downstream because we are living in this conditioned world. We are very good to follow other people. What other people do in the world? That's why all the children get into the trouble in this country. Why? They have to be included to other friends. So what you are thinking now, what the world wants to think. Real practice is going opposite. Everything, what the world do, do opposite. Then you are meditating. <laughs> That's what I realized recently. Everything world do, I go opposite. Then sometimes people call me, I'm crazy, which is okay. Yes, all the people doing the same thing, somebody doing differently, of course people call you crazy. So recently somebody sent me a little video clip. You know, all the children, now, there's a music, you know, the school or somewhere, kindergarten, they are dancing for the rhythm according to that music. One girl out of the track, she's just dancing, she's making her own music, just own world. But everybody's looking at that person. But I realized something beautiful about her doesn't matter for her. Then I was thinking, I want to be that person. So what I'm asking you, don't do whatever other you know, the people do. Go opposite direction and you know, be a little bit more aware about your thoughts and feelings. When you are driving, when you are eating, when you are talking. So I was talking to him before we start this talk. You know, he gave me lots of things and information, you know, long time friend of mine. And so I was so aware. Then I was thinking, what can I learn from that? So, does it make sense? Be m more mindful about that. Okay, good. Anything? So what I'm getting is to be self-aware and to be present for what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So what to do in situations where you, you know, you, you, like you said, in the presence of some trigger uh -huh. that causes anger or whatever, uh -huh. or uh -huh. frustration or whatever, and you feel, you know, you're present, you feel what's going on within you, and you feel that it's been, you know, rising up, rising up, rising up, and what, what do you suggest you do at that moment? So I said, don't, you know, keep looking at them. 
Keep looking at them. Keep look. Now think about you have a big house. Okay, big house. It's a very expensive. A lot of things are there. So, you know, now we have a security cameras and things, but long time ago we don't have. We have to keep a, the person to protect the house with a gun. Now that person holding the gun, you know, now he's bored and nobody's coming. What he's doing? <laughs> he's falling asleep. There's a robber always walking by, but he cannot walk into the house because all the time when he's walking by, this man is awake. Looking around, you know all these you know, security people, always looking. But one day, when he's walking by, he can see 10.30 at night, this man is falling asleep. He keeps checking, he keeps understanding. That is the time he's sneaking into the house. So what I'm asking, keep your security person really tight with your you know, six senses without losing that energy. Then you can protect. So then you can learn. So to learn that, as I said, dig into the root, look for the root. Without understanding the root of the problem, you never experience, you, you never learn what is exactly happening. I know whatever I said today, you know, tomorrow morning, you, you don't have expectation, you are an enlightened human being, you wake up, you, you are not. But maybe you go to work, you know, the Monday or Friday, middle of nowhere, maybe next week, you will realize that's what he said. That's what I want. I don't want to understand right now. When people are making the notes, <laughs> I said, you know, what is the purpose of the taking the notes? Why people are taking the notes? To remember things. If you try to remember the Dharma, that's not the Dharma. If you are taking the notes, it's okay. That means you are collecting knowledge. So whatever you remember today, that's what you want to taking care of yourself. Okay? So Dharma practice is totally different. It's a, you know, the, in, you know, the ingoing experience, not collecting information. That's why I'm always telling, asking people, what is the purpose of making the notes? Then some, some people say, I'm making the notes, I can teach to my students. Huh? I understand. I'm making the notes, I want to remember what I learned. That means going to have a college degree. Something exactly like that. Then you have to pass the test. <laughs> so this is passing the test, how you realize it. That's what's important. Okay? Okay, good.